Hey guys, hope everybody is having a great day and um, I've got another fountain pen review here for you. Um, today, I, I thought since my last uh, pen review, I, I did the Wingsung 601 and since it's uh, a vacuum filler, I thought it would be nice to kind of go back to what would be a vintage version or you could say original, so to speak. Now, I've already done one vacuum attic review, so I'm not gonna go into uh, tons of history on this pen that you see in front of you, um, but I do wanna talk a little bit about this pen. So, the pen that you see in front of you is another small pen, um, even for a, a vintage uh, scale. And to give you a, an idea, um, I just because I have it right next to me, here is a Jinhao 159. So automatically it's giving you an idea of how small this pen is. Now this pen that you see in front of you, while it is a vacuum filler, it is actually not a vacuumatic. It is a Parker Duofold. Now, at one point, like all great things, um, all, anybody that collects Parker pens or just collects vintage pens in, in general, know the history of the duofold and how amazing the pen was and how popular it was but like all good things um, they have to come to an end so to speak and duofold you know when they when parker launched their vacuumatic line duofold really took a back seat and this is kind of what you see here this pen that you see in front of you would not have been their flagship pen because it would have been going against the vacuumatic it would have been a tier just below that now this is a really interesting little pin though. Um, it's my only um, striped dual fold that I own. Um, and this one is the debutante version, which I think is kind of cool because I, I like these real small vintage pins. They fit in a shirt pocket very well. Um, this pin, uh, when, they, when they originally had launched the Stripe Duo Fold, if I'm not mistaken, they did it around 1940. I know that's when a lot of the, um, a lot of the ads went out on these pins. And this pin, if uh, I look at the date code on the pin itself, on the barrel, uh, looks like it was produced around the fourth quarter of 1940. Now something that's interesting to note is this pen would have sold for around $2.50. So back then that would have been a, a pretty big investment on a pen, like, like most um, Parker pens of its time period. Um, and these pens were offered in uh, five different colors from what I can tell. Um, you had a blue, you had a, a, a blue stripe, uh, a red stripe. Uh, there was also the one that you see here, which is I think the green and gold stripe. Um, and there were two other colors. One of them was a black. Um, and then the other one, for the life of me, I cannot remember the actual color. Um, one thing that Parker called the striped plastic, they actually called it laid tone, um, which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, and another nice, or re another really cool thing about this is and I'll show you here in a moment the filling mechanism. Obviously, we know this is a, a vacuum filler. You have your blind cap back here, but they actually use the Speedline filler. Now, they use this Speedline filler until, of course, um, World War II, until the United States got involved with World War II, and then they went to that same um, plastic or, or celluloid type uh, filler that you see, or what we consider wartime or post-wartime uh, filling mechanism. So this pen, you know, when you really look at it, it's an elegant pen. Um, I think regardless if you're male or female, it's a, a really attractive pen to look at. And I think one thing that's really neat about it is another distinguishing difference between it is you don't have your normal arrow clip, which I think is kind of cool. You've just got kind of this streamlined clip that comes down to a point. It has the, the Parker name on it. Um, so it's different than what you would see in a vacuumatic. Now you have your typical Parker jewel on top, like most Parker pins that you see, even Parker pins from today. Um, the clip, the overall clip form function is very similar to just about any other Parker clip. This jewel obviously removes from up here. You can take the clip off, change it out if the clip ever becomes damaged and things of that nature. Um, the clip, you know, does its job. It's very stiff and rigid, but it works. 
You've got, of course, um, your breather hole on either side, and then you've got this really elegant wide cap band down here. Um, I really like the uh, design and the, the thickness of the band. Um, you'll notice that the clip and the band are, are in relatively good condition um, considering the age of the pen. Now when I got this pen, this pen was not in great condition. It was, um, and it, it had a lot of issues. Um, I'll just leave it at that. And um, it took a, a while to kind of, you know, get back to working order. Um, and I took my time on it and, you know, it's not perfect. This may be a pen that at some point I may send off to get um, a more detailed repair. I think if at any point the diaphragm, when you know it needs to be changed out, I will probably send this pen off to like say Indie Pen Dance or someone else to really do a, a real high quality um, restoration on it. Um, now one really cool thing, so you, you pull the pen off and you see the nib and of course it's that you know, arrow nib that you see on a lot of vacuumatics. So it's nothing super exciting necessarily or different. Um, you see that same uh, feed and of course section that was very uh, prominent with, you know, vacuumatics or Parker pins of this era. Um, setting that off to the side and really kind of focusing on the cap. One cool thing, and we'll see, I'm gonna actually turn off this backlight but you can now see that green color and you can see the transparency in the colors. And I just think it's awesome um, when you look at this and you know, the green doesn't, I mean, you can see the green in the pen when you look at it, but in the, when you do this and you put a light in there, it just, it's so cool to think of a pen that is of this age and you know, that's one of the reasons why I love vacuumatics and just the materials. They're just so awesome. The transparency, how they work, um, it's just so cool. Um, and again, you know, this, you, you know, I've got ink in it, so you can't really tell, but again, this is a transparent material. I'm gonna see if I can get that ink to work its way down. You can't really tell. You can see it coming through a little bit. Um, this pen I just inked up. But you know, you've got obviously you can check your ink and you know when your ink level is getting low because of the transparent barrel. Um, it's striped, so all of the you got your material here and then your transparency there, material transparent and, and so forth. Now taking off the blind cap, of course, reveals that nice speed line filler, that aluminum filler. Um, and then another cool thing, just just for, you know, just to do it, is kind of looking at the, the blind cap and the material and just putting that light in there so you can kind of see it. Again, it, it's, you know, just so cool. You can actually see, come on, focus, up here at the top. Now you'll notice you've got your um, finial here. You can see some of that material coming through underneath the um, band here. So again, just something really cool to look at. Um, just goes to show how awesome these materials are on uh, these pens. Um, you know, up next, um, gonna kind of compare it to some other vacuumatics, um, just to kind of, you know, give a, a sizing comparison to give you guys an idea. And then I'll do a writing sample and then kind of finish up from there. So I'll see you guys in just one second. All right, guys, I'm back. So just to give you guys again, a sizing comparison of this pen. Now I've already done a review on this guy right here. Um, this guy is no longer inked up. He's been cleaned out. Um, these two I haven't inked up in a while. And when I do, I'll do a little bit more in-depth reviews on both of these. Um, these are both really nice writers. Um, but I wanted to give you guys an idea of sizing. So you'll notice that this is very similar in size to your vacuumatic you have here, which would be considered like a Deb. Um, and both of these, um, this one is just a tad bit shorter overall. And when I say a tad, I mean, we're talking by a hair. Um, they measure about four and seven eighth inches when they are fully capped. Um, I'm going to show you guys kind of the differences in the nibs. It's just as far as sizing and everything. And also the, um, how they are such similar as well. 
Okay, so I've uncapped all four of these guys, and again, you can tell really the similarities in the nibs. Obviously, differences in sizing or sizes. I'm sorry, um, and kind of zoom in here. Let's see if I can get a little bit closer, and you can kind of again see um, how these nibs look very similar. The sections are the same. Um, you know, when they manufacture these pins, they really, you know stayed consistent and true you know as far as how they manufactured so even though you've got a dual fold right here and you've got three vacuum addicts on um, this table um, you can definitely tell some of the similar similarities of the pen um, pardon me for zooming way in so you know Something else to note is that even though you know you've got a different line of pin here, you've got a lot of 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 the same type of material. So I think that's something that's really neat. Now, one thing I know obviously um, is that a lot of these pins, especially vacuumatics, and I'm sure the same case for these dual folds that are are produced or, or were produced this way is a lot of the materials are interchangeable um, for instance I mean this I know for a fact is not the original clip that went with this pin because I had to buy this clip um, I know that the caps and the barrels you know you can change them and so sometimes that makes it hard to to um, date the pins properly and I know there's a lot of people out there I've, I've you know as far as you know different forms I've read up on on vacuumatics and as well as um, the literature and stuff that sometimes you'll get things that are mixed that don't wouldn't have necessarily been that way when they were produced but i think this is kind of an interesting look at um, this pen compared to these three and um you know if i had it my way and i, I know i've shared this probably before especially on the, this video i mean i would i would buy i would own so many more of these vacuumatics just the materials alone are, are very striking and appealing and I think the, the pins are beautiful. So up next, I'm gonna do a writing sample on this guy and uh, then we'll just kind of finish up from there. All right guys, I'm back. Um, real quick, just to show the ink that I'm using is uh, Waterman Serenity Blue. I'm almost gonna need another bottle soon. I use that ink a ton, especially on vintage pins. Um, so again, uh, this pen is the Parker Duofolds. And this would be the debutante version. And I would say this is, um, you know, basically a fine nib. This nib needed some work. Um, I don't think that this uh, nib was taken very good care of. You know, as far as what I paid for this pin, um, if I remember correctly, I found it in an antique shop. I think I paid around $30 for it. I, I can't remember, I've, I've had it for a little while now, but I think it was around $30. Um, and it was a little more than probably what I wanted to pay, but the pen was really cool. And I, I thought I could, you know, at least get it back to writing order, which in this case I did. And now the pen, you know, I would say it was, the nib was extremely scratchy and was misaligned very badly. And the pen writes much smoother now. So as you can tell, this is not a big pen. It is a debutante pen. For me, I can write with this pen unposted. I don't typically post my vintage pens um, at all, but you can post the pen. And if you do, you know, if you've got very large hands and you post it, it posts very securely and it makes for a, a nice size pen. 
because of the materials it's made out of it, it's very weighted very nicely it's not back heavy at all um, and I'm someone that notices um, when my pins cap because I just don't do it really at all and so I notice when my pins back heavy I probably notice it more than other people And with this pin you can write with it perfectly fine um, posted so you know again another you know really cool vintage pin you know this one you can get a little bit of line variation of course i would push it too far but you can get some line variation out of this pin which is not extremely you know common with most parker pins um so that was something that was kind of interesting you know it's a it's a consistent rider for the most part especially considering how it was when i got it um, and you know, it's another pen that I enjoy using. Um, I love the materials. You know, these are pens that if you're thinking about collecting vintage pens, these are pens that I would tell you to check out, especially within the vacuumatic lines. Um, these pens will, will write consistently. Um, all four of my vacuum fillers, actually I have five. I have one that I did not show. Um, but all five of them I had to restore. Um, so I did not pay what would be like a restoration price, so to speak, with someone that had already restored the pen. So, you know, it depends upon how much you want to tinker with the pens. You know, you're going to pay more for one of these guys if it's be already been restored. Um, I don't have usually a lot of luck finding these guys in antique shops. I just got lucky with this guy. The rest of them that I have purchased, I have purchased on eBay or other um, websites. So that, that is something to note. Um, if you find one in an antique shop, check it out. Um, you know, I mean, I don't typically find them and maybe it's just the antique shops that I go to. Um, this one I actually found in Texas of all places, in Fort Worth to be exact. So again, cool pen, really enjoy using it. I'm a big fan of vacuumatics. I think, you know, if you haven't ever tried one out, get one if you can. And I think you'll be amazed at the performance of the pen and just the beauty and person of the pen is so striking. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, comment down below. Let me know what you think. Uh, let me know if you have a pen very similar to this. And um, I shall talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.